All right, these uh, last two examples are going to be for uh, uh, pre-calc for inequalities. Uh, we're going to solve the inequality x squared uh, times x minus 1 uh, times x plus 5 greater than or equal to 0. Uh, so the first thing to do is to factor and make sure the inequality is set equal to 0, which it already is. Uh, so we're going to find the boundary points. The x squared is going to give us x equals 0. x minus 1 will give us 1. And x plus 5 will give us negative 5. As your boundary points, those are also the x-intercepts. So that's where the uh, polynomial may change signs. So we'll do our sign chart. Okay, and so we need to pick a couple of values. We'll pick negative 6, and we'll plug that into the inequality. We want to see if it's true or false. So plug in that in, and we'll work that out. 36 times negative 7 times negative 1. That's going to be a negative times a negative, which is going to be a positive. So that is true uh, for the first one. So we'll accept that. We'll try minus 1, minus 1 squared, minus 1, minus 1, and minus 1 plus 5, greater than or equal to 0. That's going to end up being uh, positive times a negative times a positive. So that's going to be negative. That is false. So we're going to throw out that middle interval. We'll try 0 0.5, 0 0.5 squared, 0 0.5 minus 1 times 0 0.5 plus 5. Is that greater than or equal to 0? It's going to be 0.25 times negative 0 0.5 times 5.5. And that's going to be uh, negative because of uh, it's positive times negative times positive. And so that's going to be false. So we're going to throw out that also. We will note that it is true for 0, because if we plug 0 in, we have 0 squared, 0 minus 1, 0 plus 5, greater than or equal to 0, and 0 is greater than or equal to 0 because it's equal to 0. So we will include 0 as a singleton. It will be a little, little weird looking, but that will work out. Okay. Alright, then finally we'll try 2. So 2 squared, uh, 2 minus 1, and 2 plus 5, greater than or equal to 0. This is 4, 1, and 7, so that's certainly going to be positive, and so that is going to be true. So our solution is going to be, um, since we have a greater than or equal to, we'll use a bracket at negative 5. Um, it is true at 0 and only at 0, uh, so we'll use the squiggly bracket, and then it's true from 1 to infinity. What the graph looks like is uh, that what I've drawn over our number line. Um, we'll la learn a little bit later on in the semester how to sketch something like that. So positive is above the x-axis. Greater than or equal to zero would be above the x-axis or touching the x-axis. So we are above the x-axis from minus infinity to negative five. We are touching the x-axis at zero and then again we are positive from uh, one to infinity there. The other example we're going to look at is uh, a rational, and it's a little bit more complicated. Um, it wasn't rigged as nicely as, as some of the ones you might have in the homework, uh, because th what, what we're going to end up having doesn't factor real nicely. So let's go on to the next page, and this is example number 15. And so we're going to solve x plus 1 over x minus 1 plus 1 over x, and we want to know when is that greater than or equal to 1 fifth. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we want to set it equal to zero, okay? And then we're going to want to get a, a common denominator. So typically when we're solving uh, equations that have fractions, we do make note of the restrictions. However, um, we, I'm sorry, we make note of the restrictions, but we are also, I guess we shouldn't say but, we should just say and, we clear the fractions. Um, now I want to say, however, with an inequality, we don't know what x minus 1 is, what x is, so we can't really multiply both sides of the inequality because we don't know if it's positive or negative. If it's positive or negative, then we have to flip the inequality. Um, our LCD here is going to be 5x and x minus 1, and so instead of clearing the fraction like we normally would with an equation, what we're going to do is we're going to find a common denominator instead. So the first... Uh, fraction is mis missing a 5x, so we're going to go ahead and give it a 5x. Second fraction is missing a 5 and an x minus 1, so we're going to give it 5 and x minus 1. 
and the last fraction is equal is missing x and x minus 1. Okay. All right, so distribute 5x squared plus 5x. Distribute 5x minus 5. Distribute negative x squared and plus x. All over the common denominator of 5x and x minus 1. We'll go ahead and collect like terms. And then normally we would try to factor the, um, the numerator. This one wasn't rigged specifically, so the top would factor. So we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. And now we're going to find the boundary points. Boundary points are where the top is equal to 0, so that's why I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula, or where the bottom is equal to 0, and the bottom is nice and factored. Okay. So x is equal to negative 11 plus or minus square root 11 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 5 all over 2 times 4. So that's going to be negative 11 plus or minus 201 under the square root divided by 8. And then I stuck that in my calculator and I got uh, 0.397 and uh, negative 3.147, okay? So those are the x-intercepts. Uh, so we can change at x-intercepts and also at vertical asymptotes. Uh, the vertical asymptotes are where the denominator is equal to zero. Um, uh, well, let's, not, let's not write with a highlighter. Uh, so that would be where 5x is equal to zero. So that'd be when x is zero. And when x, x minus one is equal to zero. And that's when x is equal to one. Okay, so those are our boundary points, uh, our other two boundary points. Um, x equals 0 and x is equal to 1, those are going to be uh, also restrictions because they're in the denominator. And so because we have a greater than or equal to in the inequality, we'll use brackets at the numbers um, except for 0 and, and 1 because uh, we can't include them. Okay. All right. So then it's mostly just tedious, okay? So we'll go ahead and write down all that mess, okay? So all that mess, we'll do our, we'll do our number line. So there's a number line, a, a negative 3.147, 0, uh, 0.397, and 1. And then we just play the testing game. So we're going to plug in negative 4 um, into the inequality, and uh, we'll go ahead and work it out. So it's, it's nothing too crazy. It's mostly tedious, okay? So we are looking for greater than or equal to zero, so we'll go ahead and work out what the top is. So the top ends up being 15, the bottom is uh, 100. That is positive, so that's true. And then uh, I said, oh yeah, and one and zero are restrictions, so they don't get a bracket. No brackets at zero and one. Okay, we'll try negative one. That fits in the next interval, so We'll plug that in for the x and see what we get there. We're looking for, we don't really care too much what the number is other than is it positive or negative. Okay, uh, so we get negative 12 over 10. That is not greater than 0, so that's false. So we throw out the 1 with negative 1. We'll try something like 0.2, that's between 0 and 0.397. Okay, so we're going to plug that in and work that one out as well. So just plugging in that 0.2 for all the x's there. Let's get negative 2.64 over negative 0.8. That's going to be greater than 0 because it's a negative divided by a negative, so we'll take that interval. Next, we'll take 0.5. That is in the interval between 0.397 and 1. So we'll plug that in and uh, work that one out as well. So we get 1.5 over negative 1.25. That is a negative on the bottom and a positive on the top. So that's going to be negative. That's not greater than or equal to zero. So that is false. Okay, and then we'll clear up a little space here. Then finally, we'll try something like two. We'll throw it in. Uh, it should be positive again. And it is. It's positive, so that's greater than or equal to zero, so that's true. So now we're going to do our true intervals. So from minus infinity to negative 3.147 with a bracket, union, 
Zero is restriction, so no bracket. Bracket at the point three nine seven, and one is a restriction, so no uh, bracket there. Uh, we'll be getting into graphing uh, rationals a little bit later on, uh, but I can give you kind of an idea of what this graph uh, is going to look like. So we'll do a real rough sketch, okay? So later on we'll talk about uh, the horizontal asymptote, and that's going to be 4 over 5. We'll talk about how to find that. We have a vertical asymptote at 0 and also at 1. And where you have an x-intercept at negative 3.147. Oops. So somewhere out there. And then we also have uh, an x-intercept at 0.397. That's going to be somewhere about here. Your graph likes its asymptote, so we're going to be doing something like this. And then something like this. And then something like this. Okay. So we were interested in where it was above the x-axis, or touching the x-axis. That would be right here, including the x-intercept. Then we have a vertical asymptote, so we don't include the zero. And then we include the x-intercept. And then we have a vertical asymptote. And then that would be everywhere where it's greater than or equal to zero. Okay? So that is it. That's probably about as complicated in terms of the rationals as we're going to get. Probably a little bit more so because uh, it didn't factor out real nicely.